G'day football fans and welcome back to episode 7 of our Juventus rebuild here on Dylan on the Ball. It is Champions League knockout stage. We are absolutely pumped for this one. Today's video will be the first leg against Leverkusen. We've got them in the round of 16. I'll probably skip. I mean, look, depending on how this game goes, we might then skip through to whatever next round is because, I mean, chances are we're going to absolutely pump them and next video, if it were to be the second leg, would be a very much an event. So it would be pretty boring. We'll see. Depends how today's goes, I suppose. Before we get into the highlights and catching you up on all that has happened since you were last here, the January transfer window has finished up, so we do have one outgoing and one incoming to catch you up on. You may have had a guess of it from the thumbnail, I'm not sure. Let's start with the outgoing, so you can guess. I mean, even more of a clue as to who it is. Leaving the club was Alex Sandro, 32 overall left back, again, Similar to Di Maria in a number of ways, he has gone to Arsenal, which seems to be becoming like a retirement village for Juventus players, I guess, because that's where Di Maria ended up, I think. Is that right? No, Di Maria went to Aston Villa. I'm an idiot. Anyway, Premier League is our retirement home. He's gone to Arsenal. They came in with an offer of 27.5 million for a 32-year-old with six months left on his contract. Uh, like, I, I don't really understand it, but of course I took it. What else was I going to do? We've then had to replace him, and a player that I did talk about at the start of the career mode is who we've brought in to replace him, Croatian international, Borna Sosa. He is down a couple overall. He's also seven years younger. He's a little bit quicker, just incredible crossing, which is absolutely what we're going to use him for, really. Get him up the pitch, get some balls, swung in towards Vlaovic or Keane, whoever is on. We paid about 24 million euros for him, so we did, I guess, make a slight profit having sold Alexandro on for, for 27 and a half, so pretty happy with that, and I think he's a great addition. He, you know, isn't as good as Alex Grimaldo, so he will play sort of second fiddle to him, but I guess not a bad backup to have a Croatian international, solid physically, solid defensively, maybe could improve a little bit, but great crossing, great going forward. We're very happy to have him at the club. That is the only major incoming and outgoing that did happen i think we sold a like third choice goalkeeper so I, I mean if you care about that i'll show it next video chances are low though since you were last here we've had a bunch of games i think about seven or eight all up something like that oh i can't remember i should probably know these things but because we progressed in the cup spoiler alert there's extra fixtures in there since you were last here so without further ado without further mucking around Let's get into it with our first match where we hosted Cremonese. One goal in it then, it's Cody Gakpo being set free. No dink over the keeper this time. He places it beautifully around the keeper. Sort of reminds me of a, a Thierry Henry or something, but you know, a little less quality because it's not right in the corner, but it's it gets the job done and we take all three points. It was then away to Empoli and you can already see the final score at the top. Why are we showing this one? Because look at that save! Wojciech Szczesny, you absolute superstar goalkeeper. He doesn't get enough credit. All these highlights are just him either conceding or not being involved at all. So I thought I'd show a little bit of love for an absolute just stunning save. Then we take the lead thanks to Kostic. His touch way too close to the keeper. But he manages to get the cute little impudent dink. Another Thierry Henry reference there. If I don't know if anyone gets that one. Um, <laughs> he takes it very close to the keeper. Just dinks it out over him. Right at the death. Three points, Juve. Next up, it was Sampdoria in the Coppa Italia, getting the scoring underway. Just a fantastic finish from Dusan Vlaovic. He gets put through here. I think it's Kostic that plays him through. Then first time, side foots it. It is like a decent height for the keeper. But when you place it that well, he's got absolutely no hope. That is 1-0. It becomes 2-0 then. Thanks again to Dusan Vlaovic. Places it across the keeper this time. I don't know what that flash was. Did you guys get a... Was that just on my screen? That seemed like it was a lightning strike or something. I don't know, maybe... Uh, yeah, couldn't tell you. It's Dusan Vlaovic though, giving us a 2-0 win in the cup. Next up, another 1-0 win. This time it is... Guess who? Dusan Vlaovic. Little dink over the keeper. I mean, we faced Sampdoria on back-to-back -back games and Dusan Vlaovic scored all three goals, gave us all three points on this occasion. We roll on. It was then the... Battle of Turin, where Nikola Vlasic, in 13 frames a second, scores a penalty. What happened there? Why was that so slow? I don't know. Sends Chesney the wrong way from the penalty spot. Just about side netting. Gives Torino a 1-0 lead. 
We manage to claw them back here. Locatelli wins the ball off the back of a corner, flings it in towards Weston McKenney. Rises up well, powers ahead of past the keeper. Well done by Locatelli to win that one, get himself into a little crossing position. Manages to pick someone out. And Weston McKenney does incredibly well to rise up, find the bottom corner with that one. And unfortunately, we just get the one point from that one. Next, it was Bologna in the league. No, in the cup, idiot. And it was a 1-0 win. Who would believe it? It's Bremer from a corner. It actually counts as Bremer's goal, which I think is bizarre because the goalkeeper saves it into the back of his defender. Bremer does well. It's an absolute free header. He should have buried it. So, I mean, really, it should be his goal. I don't, whatever. It is what it is. It's a 1-0 win. We go through in the cup. Second last highlight here. It is away against Monza and at the back post at the end of a brilliant counter-attack. Very flowing move. Gorgeous football. Well, as much as it can be with these highlights anyway. Vlaovic lifts it to the far post where Chiesa is arriving right on time. Powers it past the keeper. Gives us a 1-0 win. All three points. Loves to see it. Then lastly, we hosted Lecce where Leon Bailey cut inside, found a pass into Moise Keane who gets axed as he fires out on past the keeper. No chance for the keeper at the end of the day. Probably a suspicion of offside, but I don't... I mean, FIFA didn't call it, so I don't... I assume it wasn't. He fires a pass the keeper. 4-1-0. Leon Bailey then gets himself a goal. A good little flicking ball there from Fabio Moretti. Leon Bailey, little bit of a shoulder drop. Comes inside here. Ready for it? Oh, little shoulder drop. Takes it towards the penalty spot, places it in the bottom corner. 2-0 win, all three points. What a, what a sequence of results. Those results in the league, at least, have put us up to an eight-point lead at the top of the league, ahead of Atalanta, we'll say, then Milan in third, Napoli in fourth, rounding out the Champions League places. We are looking far and away the best side, hoping to round out the league title, you know, as soon as we can, really. I don't like that we don't have the best goal difference, that pisses me off. Like, we've got easily the best defense, we just haven't scored enough goals, and I mean, whenever our next league game is in a video, I'm gonna have to try and just score, like, all of our goals to catch that up, and I wanna be the top scoring team, we're fourth, fourth, fifth. Bloody hell, there are five te four teams that have scored more than us. And one that scored even with. This is ridiculous. Someone in 10th only has one less than us. This is stupid. As for the Coppa Italia, we are through to the semi-finals. It is, I mean, it's pretty much the four best sides. I mean, you'd probably replace Rome with Napoli, but our semi-final will be against Milan. Uh, that might be a future video. I don't know. I don't really care too much about it, to be completely honest with you. I haven't played a single game of it. It's all been highlights. We might play the final of that. We might skip through it and just focus on the Champions League and the and Serie A. We'll see. That rounds it out, takes us through to today's game, where, as you see here, plenty of games have already had their first leg. Lots of tight run affairs, except for Bayern Munich, who are, you know, doing what they do, I suppose. That leaves it up to us. We are last cab off the rank along with Marseille and Real Madrid. Let's head to the lineups, see what we are facing in Xabi Alonso's Leverkusen side. That's weird to say. Our Juventus lineup today away at the, is it Bay Arena or Bay Arena? Cause like looking at it, that's Bay Arena. Like that's how you say that, but then it's, is it Bayer Leverkusen, Bayer Leverkusen? I'm really confusing myself. Anyway, our lineup, that's the important bit. Chesney in goals, back line of Dallo, Bremer, Gatti and Grimaldo. Midfield three of Locatelli, Pogba and Rabiot. Front line is Gakpo on the left for wearing the captain's armband, which I should probably change. Then Chiesa on the right end of Vlaovic up front. You can see people are just really starting to improve. Vlaovic up to 87, Chiesa 87, Locatelli 84, Bremer 86. I think uh, Lima's just gone up as well. He's probably 84 by now, so. We're really starting to look like that Champions League winning squad, potentially. We've just got to make it happen, Cap'n. As for Leverkusen, their lineup is Lunev in goal, which seems like someone just went to say Leverkusen and screwed it up. They were like, all right, it's Juventus versus Lunev. Le Leverkusen, you know what I mean? It's Lunev in goal, back three of Hincapié, Tapsober, and Gomez. I think that's Joe Gomez. If it is, you'd probably want to swap him around with Hincapié, who's a left side defender. Midfield pairing of Demibai and Andrich, which seems like they're gonna leave themselves a little bit bare because I think Demibai is not exactly a holding midfielder. Out wide, it is some new signings in Munayin and Rafa. More new signings than in behind their striker with Pino, Jeremy Pino, I'm assuming, and Nicolo Zaniolo in behind as Moon up front. They look like a very good side, really. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's one step below top class, you know? It's like those players that aren't quite winning league titles and 
playing for great teams. I mean, I guess arguably other than Joe Gomez. If you if you call one t- league title and one Champions League in seven years great, did that trigger anyone? Did that trigger anyone? Was that a good bait? Anyway, they're all players that seem like that one step below or they're you know on their way towards being fantastic. Should be a good test though. Let's head to the Bay Arena, I'm calling it. <laughs> Here we go then. We are about to get underway at Leverkusen. I'm going to just cut out the crap and call it Leverkusen. Make sure... You do leave us a like down below, subscribe if you are new around here, comment what you think of the video, all that sort of brilliant, beautiful stuff. If you like Borna Sosa, make sure to comment that down below. Also, I mean, why not start trying to tell us who you think we should rebuild next? Because, I mean, this might be coming to an end end at Season 1, we'll see. Also in the description below, that's a great monobrow. In the description below are the social medias if you want to follow us there. That is that. Let's get to kick off. Let's play some football. All right, underway, bad superstition with them kicking off. Doesn't bode well. I always feel like something bad's going to happen. Although, last match we kicked off first and uh, Sassuolo nearly made the comeback of all comebacks. Good chance here early with Zaniolo in the box, almost getting tackled by his own teammate. Gives it back to Asmoon. Oh, God. Andrich outside the box. Gives it back to Asmoon. Good block. <gasps> Second chance. Bloody hell. That was a start. Who's that? Is that Demi Bai, maybe? No, nope, that's definitely Demi Bai. Whoever that was. They nearly caught us off guard. Great save by Chesney. Not a good start. Very much overrunning us in midfield and and at centre back, I suppose. Asmoon wins that. Oh, not a clean, clean header. Loops up for Chesney, thankfully. And we can come away with it where I think this will be. Look, we're going to have a lot of spaces like this. Oh, tried that through ball all the way through for Chiesa. Going to have a lot of spaces like that where we get beyond their two central midfielders. And, or like this, where we get beyond their central midfielders and we're just running at them. Here's Vlaovic in the box, across the keeper, 1-0. It's that easy. Like, we just, a couple of touches, we score. It's Dusan Vlaovic, eight minutes in. He's been sensational. The second half of the season, I think I commented a couple of videos about how he's you know, highly rated but won't finish for me. He's he heard that I think because he's taken it, taken it on board for sure, and he's also taken us up one nil. That was very slick though. It was like you know, we uh, Dallo won the ball, gave it to Chiesa, little ball inside for Pogba, bang done. Again, do need to be wary of oh, Oop. Rabio through for Vlaovic. Is he onside? No, he's offside. Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Dusan, Dusan. Chill, mate. She'll be right. Very, yeah. Need to be very wary of the amount of players that get in behind our central midfielders because, I mean, they they, they are going to outnumber us. Oh, here's another chance of Vlaovic. He's through. Can he dink the keeper? No, good save by Lunev. Good save. That's fair play. I don't know why that works so well in the highlights, but then it gets to games and I can't do it. We win it again. Here's Gakpo coming inside, tackled by Andrich, but gets it back. Now, Rabio with the ball. Oh, tackle. Damn it. Oh, the pressing, not great. Now, Zaniolo. Then we press well. That's the stuff. Grimaldo through for Rabio. Grimaldo overlapping. Can he find a cross? No. He, what was that? No idea. Absolutely no idea. It's a goal kick as well. That's shocking. They have to have sold Kredetsky for, uh, for Lunev to be starting, which I guess that might explain why they've got the money to buy, like, you know... Who is it? Munayin and Pino and... Oh, here's a chance for Chiesa. He's going to finish that. Of course he is. The keeper doesn't even go for it. This formation that they've got, in theory, if they can keep the ball forward, they're going to have heaps of chances because they're going to overrun us. But at the back, as soon as we get beyond their midfield like this, it's absolutely even Stevens. Not even Stevens. The opposite of even Stevens. The easiest thing in the world. Chiesa with all the room in the world in the box... Places at bottom corner, the keeper doesn't even dive, because why would he? No chance, it's 2-0. It was about this time, and up this scoreline, last video, um, where I where I reminded you that this is on Legendary, but I won't do that this time, because when I did it last time, they made a huge comeback. Oh, well done, Chesney, bloody hell. Comeback nearly started straight away. Big save, Chesney, again. Another corner for... Leverkusen, Demi Bay takes it short for Munayin. 
who brings it in. Another chance. Another chance. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know who that was. Tap sober, maybe. Yes, tap sober with a big shot. Big save again from Chesney, who's been sensational this season, really. Another just another thing to add to his highlight reel. Another corner for Leverkusen. Demi Bai again takes it short for Munayin. Munayin back to Demi Bai. Back to Rafa on the edge of the box. To someone. Oh my god, another chance. Was that Asmund? Another save for Chesney. Another corner. This is what I mean. When they can get ahead of us and pin us back, we're going to struggle because they're going to have so many people forward. And they're not, you know, they're not exactly schmucks. They're decent enough players. Another long attempt there, and now we get to counter. Rabio plays the ball out in front of Gakpo. Gakpo in the box. Gives it to Chiesa, goal. It's 3-0. It's that easy? That's what I'm damn talking about. Go on, Chiesa. That's 3-0. We managed to... Look, thanks to Chesney, really. Keep them out at the other end. We go forward. We slice through them again. It's 3-0. Great work by Cody Gakpo. Cutting inside uh, Hincapié there. Playing in Chiesa, who gets himself another goal. I do always think that Chiesa might actually benefit from being a more central player because just the way that he moves and the way that he carries the ball forward I think he'd be better at it but look if he's if he's getting us goals in big games like this can't complain as Moon now bringing it forward but like as soon as we win the ball we'll just have huge spaces like this they are it does look like they try to go to a back four when they have the ball but it just doesn't work out that way Chiesa now crossing to the back post for Vlaovic or not quite over whoever that was at the back and then they clear it now we're going to have all the space in the world. Heaps of room there. No one closing anyone down. Oh, Asmoon is now. But we play out of it well. Bremer out wide to Dallo for Vlaovic. Oh, not quite. Oh, Pogba though. He will. <laughs> that worked out so well. That is stupid. I went for the. I went for an absolute spectacular speculative effort with uh, Dusan Vlaovic. They tackle it through for Pogba. Which... I couldn't have picked out that pass if I had tried to pick out that pass. It would have been intercepted or whatever. But because it's a tackle from one of their players, Demi Bai, I think. It falls to Pogba, who just absolutely nails it. Absolutely gives the keeper no hope. And we're up 4-0. This is what I was talking about. This is what I was talking about. Like the next video, if it was going to be the second leg of this match, it would be the most pointless video in the world. Like we could just hardly need to pick up the controller. Gomez is on the right now. I don't know what's happened there, but I guess they they can change that around if they want to. I'm not going to stop them. Oh, they've given us the ball there. Oh, no. Well intercepted. Our playing out from the back doesn't work that time. Surely a foul on Dallo. What? Munayin, back to Rafa, who's on the left now. As Moon. Are we good enough? Are you serious? Giving away a penalty, Diogo Dallo. Are you for real? It seems like he barely bumped him. Am I losing my mind? Here's a replay of it. All right, he's he's bought that surely. That is, that's shocking. Penalty for Juve. It's Munayin. Oh, saved. I, bro. Oh no. Oh, Asmun. Back to Munayin. Straight into the hands. Of Bloody hell, Chesney's a legend. I feel like I've stopped being very good at saving penalties. So to get that one, I'm pretty happy. Gakpo. Oh, can't play it around Gomez. Oh, and then there's going to be heaps of space because bloody Grimaldo had vacated this area. Bremer doesn't win his tackle. Demi Bay in the box. Oh, intercepted well. I think that was Locatelli that intercepted that. Now we can run away. Chiesa now on the ball. He cuts inside. He plays through Vlaovic. Beautiful counter-attacking football. Five bloody nil. Five nil on the stroke of half time. Absolutely smooth as anything. Smooth as a baby's bum. Slicing through them. I probably shouldn't talk about baby's bums on YouTube. Um, Chiesa cuts inside, plays a good through ball for Vlaovic, who gets beyond tap sober, fires it beyond Lune Evan goal. Gives us a 5 0 lead on the stroke of half time. We've managed to weather the storm of Leverkusen and just slice through them at the other end. Fantastic stuff. Shout out to bloody Chesney as well, because we could easily be very much in a contest here, but thanks to his numerous saves, including a penalty save, we are 
not only ahead, we're absolutely battering them. It'll be halftime shortly. Gakpo, oh, I went to slide in Vlaovic, but I sort of at the same time wanted it to just go at a half time, which it should do shortly, surely. Asmoon coming forward now. Rafa on the ball. Rafa into the box. Shot. Oh, another save, Chesney. You absolute madman. He's going to have a huge rating. This is stupid. Goalkeepers are usually rubbish in FIFA. What's happening? Corner ball. Headed away by Vlaovic. That should be half time, surely. And it is. 5 0 at half time. That is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. What is it? Two for Vlaovic, two for Chiesa, and one for Pogba, maybe? Just beautiful stuff. Look, starting this game, uh, like, oh, I didn't mean to go back to computer there. Um, so starting this game, and when I was talking about, you know, putting it through a few, rather, past Leverkusen, that was a huge stack, bloody hell. Um, I definitely wasn't assuming or, or thinking that it would come on the back of a just an incredible goalkeeping display. I thought, you know, we've been very good in most games. It's, oh, chance? No. Headed away by Tapsoba. Back to Gakpo now. He'll cross for the back post for Pogba. Doesn't win it. Dallow maybe. Heads it out for a goal kick. That's cool. As I was saying, we've been fantastic in a lot of games this season. I mean, even the Sassuolo game last, last video, which ended 4-3, uh, if you weren't there, uh, which no one was. It's just me in a room alone. Um, <laughs> oh, we'll have a go from effort. Why not? Okay, well over the bar. No one look. Don't look at that. Don't ignore that. I wanted to, like in the highlights, as you saw earlier, I wanted to give a shout out to Chesney for how just brilliant he's been. That huge save from a, uh, a, I think it was against Empoli, a header from corner, where the ball looked just about past him, and he managed to somehow get there, push it over the bar. It was almost... Like that David Seaman... David Seaman? No. Yeah, David Seaman save. Anyway, Rabio in the box. Nope. Chiesa, though. Whoa, well done. That was beautiful. Tap sober. That was great defending. I mean, yes, I should have perhaps finished it properly. But also, it's 5-0 already, so I don't care. Good ball there from Bremer as he wins it. To Chiesa. Vlaovic in the box. Scores. It's that simple. It is that absolutely simple. Hat-trick for Vlaovic. Beautiful volley, similar to a goal he scored, I think it was against Sassuolo actually, a similar volley but from the other side with his better left foot, this time on his right. Great cross from Chiesa to a wide open Vlaovic, six yards out. Absolute shambles at the back, isn't it? Does very well on the volley, keeps it down low and hard into the bottom corner for his hat-trick for six bloody nil. I think we've played teams that have had this formation a couple of times and it's always the same where if they are forward or if they're playing through your midfield, it isn't easy <laughs> to, to keep them out. But then as soon as you get by them, it's like this. Gakpo will look for Pogba at the back post. Pogba doesn't quite get there. Rabio does though. Gets it to Kiesa back. Oh, the bicycle. Stop it. Bicycle kicks straight at the keeper. Ends up being taken away by Leverkusen. As Moon with a big switch for Zaniolo. Just about keeps that in, but then gives it away. So that's cool. <laughs> Gakpo on the ball now. He'll bring it forward. Look at this space in midfield. Nothing happened, and we just got all that space. Grimaldo to the back post for Chiesa. Doesn't win it. Okay, that's not it's not what you want Chiesa to be trying to do, but <laughs> why not? Gakpo from range. Off the bar. I was very much not confident in that. <laughs> I was just, just trying it because I'm up 6-0. Why not? It hits the post, or the bar rather. And we get it out for a throw-in thanks to Dallow stopping Munayin. They've just taken Rafa off for Timothy Fosumensa, um, the former, like, what was it, United and maybe Aston Villa or something? Mm, I can't remember. Uh, fullback. So they gone to, like, a four at the back, maybe? Great header there from Vlaovic for Chiesa. Oh, it doesn't quite work out. Just tried to... Take it across midfield before picking a pass. Pino now. That was too many P's in a row. Oh, good ball over the top from Fossimensa for Pino. Well marshaled by Gatti. I've been very impressed by Gatti. I didn't... Oh! Bloody hell. Well done, Chesney, I guess. Have they gone to a four at the back, I guess? Maybe? 
Because Incapier looks like he's playing left bat now. Maybe that's just because the ball's out here. I don't know. Not a lot on there for Chiesa. He'll look back for Vlaovic outside the box with a curler. Big save, Lunev. Doing his best Chesney impression. And they play out from the back well. Beautiful stuff. Keep up the great work, Leverkusen. You might make something of yourselves yet. Pino now through. He may look for... Yes, he looked for Asmoon, but Gatti again. Does very well. I was saying just before, I don't, didn't really know who he was. I mean, before this season, really. Um, and then, of course, this career mode started. So, very much know that he's a dude for... <laughs> for Juve now, but he's been yeah he's been fantastic. Locatelli now on the ball. They've brought off Asmoon for the uh, bloody football manager legend Holzek, 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 whatever it is. I don't know. The Czech Czech guy, whatever he is. I don't know. Corner ball. <laughs> Something I've started doing because I just don't care. Knuckle ball corners. Why not? Cody Gakpo swings it in. Oh. Oh, it fell to Bremer and I didn't react quickly. I couldn't tell what was happening. Damn it. It fell to Bremer. He probably could have put his laces through it if I wasn't just slow. Just had the IQ of a rock. <laughs> okay, so we're 83 minutes in now. It's definitely turned into a non-event this second half. We're very much taking the foot off the gas. Oh, nearly there from Locatelli. Trying to slide in Vlaovic for potentially a fourth for himself. That is seventh for the team it would have been. Leverkusen now playing well. I just said no Leverkusen. Munayin loses it to Dallo. Dallo, no. Oh, looked over for Chiesa. Oh, oh, Chiesa's now injured. That's great news. Uh, what can we do here? I'm not going to cross it from there because there's no one in the box but Rabio, and Rabio I don't think can win headers unless he's open. Vlaovic now edge of the box, straight at the keeper. Bugger. Hoping for. A you know, a good finish there. Just a good way to cap off what would have been 7-0. Like the Western McKenney goal against someone. PSG, maybe. Where it just, like, you know, tied up the scoring really well. Dallow now. Far post for Gakpo. Can't win his header. And they take it out. It should be full-time shortly. A simple, simple, easy win. <laughs> if you, you know, don't think about Wojciech Chesney and his huge part to play with save after save after save and a hat-trick for Dusan Vlaovic. Making it 4-0 was possibly the best goal of the game. Vlaovic lined one up from range, got tackled. It fell through to Paul Pogba with a great first touch, set himself up to fire one across Lunev in goal. Find the far bottom corner. Lunev, yeah, very close to his near post. Possibly, possibly would say that would be better positioning, but I don't really care. Then the hat-trick goal for Dusan Vlaovic. Good ball down the line there from Bremer for Chiesa to an open Vlaovic, about seven yards out maybe. Manages to wrap his right boot around that one. Good blind sort of finish into the bottom corner, beyond the keeper. That made it 6-0, that's how it finished. So there you see confirmation of our 6-0 win over Leverkusen in the first leg of our round of 16 tie in the Champions League. A dominant performance, one that, you know, I didn't exactly expect to go you know, to that degree. I was hoping for a few goals ahead so that we didn't really have to play the second leg. I can't say I was expecting that though. Next video, look, I'm not too sure. Look, there's, soon there's a few good games. Like we've got Fiorentina, then we've got a semi-final in the Coppa Italia versus AC Milan. We've then got Atalanta and Napoli a week apart. Then the second leg against Leverkusen. Then Hayes Verona. Hellas, Hayes, whatever. Then Roma, Udinese and Inter. Like, it's, Pretty decent. Oh, it's a two-legged thing against Milan. About eight weeks apart? What's what's that about? Why is it that far apart? Who did that? That's bizarre. Anyway, I think we'll come back for Roma here on the 2nd of April. But it also depends on who we get in the Champions League. Like maybe we'll just want to do the Champions League. I don't know. I'll, uh, I'll make a decision and you'll watch it. That's sort of how it works, I guess. <laughs> um, that was very demand. I'm sorry. That wasn't... I don't want to be like that. Please, come come watch. Why not? Anyway, that'll wrap up today's video. You see here the roundup of the results in the round of 16 first leg ties. Make sure you do leave us a like down below if you enjoyed the video, especially if you made it through this far. You must have enjoyed just something. Some out of the half hour or whatever. You must have enjoyed something, surely. Make sure to comment what you thought of it, who you think we should rebuild next, who I should assign instead of Borna Sosa. I don't know. 
whatever you reckon. Make sure to subscribe as well. We are so, so close to 100. That would be so cool to get. It's uh, it's getting weird to me that there is, you know, 90, uh, I mean, oh, live update, 94 people that want to subscribe uh, and watch this. It's just getting weird to me, you know, because that's like, you know, three classrooms worth. What? Yeah, I guess. Anyway, uh, stop getting sentimental and emotional now. That'll do us. That'll wrap it up. Make sure you tune in next time for whether it's a huge league match, a cup final, a Champions League tie against a big team. Who knows? You'll see next time. Until we go again. Peace.